The pyramids and sphinx of the Giza Plateau are possibly thousands of years older than mainstream researchers suggest. In fact, these ancient structures could well predate the ancient Egyptian civilization by thousands of years. Many researchers indicate there is enough evidence to suggest the Giza Plateau was heavily flooded in the past. Interestingly, given the evidence found at the Giza Plateau, the pyramids and sphinx could be some of the megalithic structures that survived the Great Deluge. Researchers suggest that the Sphinx, the Temple of the Sphinx, and the first 20 fields of the Great Pyramid of Giza exhibit erosion due to deep water saturation. Much has been said about the Great Pyramid of Giza and its mysterious companion, the Great Sphinx. While we still have absolutely no clue as to who erected the Great Pyramid and who managed to carve the Great Sphinx, countless theories have been proposed trying to explain two of the most mysterious constructions ever built on the surface of the planet. While many questions remain unanswered about the Great Pyramid of Giza, we still remain perplexed by the complexity and precision of the incredible ancient structure thousands of years after it was created. How is it possible that thousands of years ago, people managed to quarry and transport huge blocks of stone and incorporate them into creating one of the most enigmatic ancient structures on Earth? Perhaps the far greater mystery is how ancient mankind managed to align the Great Pyramid of Giza so precisely. The Great Pyramid of Giza is the most accurately aligned structure in existence and faces true north with only 3 60th of a degree error. The position of the North Pole moves over time and the pyramid was exactly aligned at one time. Furthermore, the Great Pyramid is located at the center of the land mass of the Earth. The east-west parallel that crosses the most land and the north-south meridian that crosses the most land intersect in two places on the Earth. One is in the ocean and the other is the Great Pyramid. According to researchers, in the year 10,450 BC, the Sphinx and the Three Pyramids were aligned perfectly with the constellation of Orion, known as the Orion's Belt. The Great Pyramid contained four long interior shafts, which are precisely aligned with specific stars in the sky. The southern ones align with Sirius and Orion, and the northern ones align with Ursa Minor and Alpha Draconis. However, all of the above isn't as impressive as the fact that apparently the entire landscape of the Giza necropolis, including the pyramids and sphinx, display signs of erosion. This has led researchers to suggest that certain areas of this mighty necropolis were once submerged under the sea and a newly discovered fossil makes this theory look a lot more believable. Robert Schotch, an American associate professor of natural sciences at the College of General Studies, has been best known as a proponent of the Sphinx water erosion hypothesis. Dr. Schotch was one of the first researchers to really address the theory that the structures of the plateau are much older than previously thought. In the early 90s, he suggested that the Sphinx was thousands of years older than archaeologists had believed, dating it back to 5000 to 9000 BC. This suggestion was based on erosion patterns of water found at the mountains and surrounding rocks. However, Dr. Schotch isn't the only one to suggest that we are looking at evidence that these ancient structures were once submerged. Archaeologist Sherry Falmorsi, who has worked extensively on the Giza Plateau for over two decades, suggests that the Giza Plateau was once flooded by a surge. The temple site of Menkare, in particular, may have been a former lagoon when the sea level covered the necropolis, the Sphinx, and the complex of temples and other monuments of the area. In an article published on the Jigal Research website, Mr. Morsi stated the following, During one of the documentations of the ancient coastline, I almost tripped with a block of the second level of the temple. To my surprise, the bump on the top surface of the block that almost tripped me was, in fact, an exoskeleton of a fossil of what appears to be an echinoid, or sea urchin, which are marine creatures that live in relatively shallow waters. El Morsi believes the flooding was quite significant, peaking at about 75 meters above current sea level and creating a coastline spanning the Kafra enclosure near the Sphinx of the Temple of Menkare. 
El Morsi also suggests that there is evidence present at the monuments and surrounding blocks that indicate the presence of tidal waves in the past, and even suggest an intertidal zone of about 2 meters. But there are several other theories which different scientists have suggested. Some researchers believe that the echinoid found in the limestone was actually exposed by erosion and the fossilized creature was part of the original limestone that had formed 30 million years ago. But Morsi responded to these claims in an interesting way and suggested that the creature was cemented or petrified in a relatively recent time, citing evidence that the creature was found placed gravitationally on the floor, that the fossil was in almost perfect condition and was located within the intertidal range of the lagoon, which is a big contrast to the small fish typically found in limestone blocks. Mr. Morsi stated the following, we can clearly see the pristine condition and the details of the perforations of the exoskeleton. This means that the sea creature must have been petrified in recent times. Two Ukrainian scientists who presented their study at the International Conference of Geoarchaeology and Archaeomineralogy held in Sofia, titled Geological Aspect of the Problem of Dating the Great Egyptian Sphinx Construction, suggest the Great Sphinx of Giza is hundreds of thousands of years old and present clear indications of water erosion. According to Manichev and Parkomenko, the problem of dating the Great Egyptian Sphinx construction is still valid despite the long-term history of its research. The geological approach in connection to other scientific natural methods permits to answer the question about the relative age of the Sphinx. The conducted visual investigation of the Sphinx allowed the conclusion about the important role of water from large bodies which partially flooded the monument with a formation of wave-cut hollows on its vertical walls. Manichev and Parkomenko firmly believe that the Sphinx had to be submerged for a long time underwater and, to support this hypothesis, they point toward existing literature of geological studies of the Giza Plateau. According to Manichev and Parkomenko, it is the sea level during the Calabrian phase which is the closest to the present mark, with the highest GES hollow at its level. High levels of seawater also caused the Nile overflowing and created long-living water bodies. As to time, it corresponds to 800,000 years. While many people firmly oppose the theories presented by Manichev, Parkomenko, and Schotch, others strongly believe that the magnificent monuments located today at the Giza Plateau are the ultimate evidence of pre-flood monuments built by an entirely different civilization that predates the civilization which inhabited the land of the pharaohs, possibly even before the Great Flood described in numerous ancient texts by different cultures. While many people oppose the idea that a Great Flood existed on Earth, researchers estimate that in the last 140,000 years, sea levels have fluctuated by over 120 meters in different parts of the world. Interestingly, Robert Ballard, who is one of the best-known underwater archaeologists, probed the depths of the Black Sea near the coast of modern-day Turkey, looking for traces of ancient civilizations that date back to the time of Noah, indicating that the Great Biblical Flood, mentioned in ancient Sumerian texts, was real. Ballard even established a timeline of the events by carbonating shells found along the ancient coastline. Ballard estimates that around 5000 BC, the catastrophic flood occurred, a date that, according to many of the scholars, is the date when Noah's historic flood also took place. The story of a great flood sent by God, or gods according to much earlier testimony, to destroy humanity for its sins, is a widespread account shared by many religions and cultures around the world, and dates back to our earliest recorded history. From India to ancient Greece, Mesopotamia, and even among North American Indian tribes, there is no shortage of such tales that often sound the same. Some of these stories truly sound so similar that one could wonder whether all cultures around the planet had experienced such an event. Can it be that all flood accounts so zealously repeated around the world are a collection of myths or isolated incidents that mainstream academia maintains? Or was the Great Flood a single worldwide cataclysm that affected all humanity at one point during our prehistory? 
While small isolated disasters can stress and frighten affected populations equally, their overall effect is short-lived and they often fade from memory within decades, if not years. In the case of the Great Flood, however, we have a story that seems to have no boundaries and one that every culture insists on its worldwide nature. How big and how destructive a disaster it must have been to have seared itself into our ancestors' collective memory for thousands of years. Judging by the shared testimony, this must not only have been an event that affected everyone simultaneously, but in order for it to have become a permanent fixture in the human psyche, it must have been an experience that persisted not only for days or months, but for several generations. Based on all the above, it isn't hard to wonder if it's possible that the magnificent pyramids of Giza and the Great Sphinx were in fact built before the Great Flood by a very ancient civilization which predates even the earliest Egyptian records. Perhaps they were even built before Egypt was a desert, and even before the dawn of man as we know it. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like our video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe and click the notification button to be notified of our next videos.